<laughs> Melvin gets himself into such trouble. <laughs> Will he ever learn? Yeah, the characters in the office are pretty funny, but uh, what's with those four people in the attic? <laughs> See, this is brain. They represent his thoughts. Oh. That's funny, then. <laughs> ah, Herman Louise Nichols. This is my niece, Renee. Oh, how do you do, Renee? What's up? Hi, Renee. Hey. Renee will be living with me and working in the mailroom. Well, at least you'll enjoy your job. <laughs> Welcome to New York, Renee. <laughs> Thanks. What brings you here? I hear it's a pretty exciting city. Really? Where'd you hear that? This city is exciting. Dangerous. Troubled. That woman's not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! Louise is so sweet. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. I'm gonna work. Hi. Uh, Herman, will you be my buddy? I'll always be your buddy, Louise. No, no, look at this memo. What's it say? What's it say? They're establishing a buddy system. They're asking people to leave the building in pairs from now on. It seems a woman was accosted on the third floor last night. Hey, I was nowhere near the third floor last night. It was right near the brain. He was there. He'll tell you. I went to the bathroom for a while. He could have done anything. <laughs> oh, well, you two cut it out. We were all here together. We are always together. Yeah. Yeah, that's our story. <laughs> well, Louise, it would probably make more sense if Hetty was your buddy. She goes home the same way you do. Ah, good idea. Hetty, will you be my buddy? Why in a million years would I want to be your buddy? Because I'm feisty, I'm a fire plug, and I'm prepared to take a bullet for you, babe. All right, sounds good. Where are you going? I'm just going to the ladies. Well, I think I should go with you. All right. All right, it's just a stapler. <laughs> Folklore, I'm never gonna go back to what you're doing. Nothing to see here. Hey, Renee. Hey. Hey, people, look alive. Got your mail here. Yo, 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 what's the scenario, Herm? Oh, just chillin'. Oh, well, that beats ill and home slight word. That's it. I've exhausted my hip vocabulary. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, uh, shouldn't someone be delivering the mail? Okay, okay, Uncle Paul. Herman, can I see you in my office? Later, homie. Did my niece just imply that you're not a heterosexual? <laughs> no, sir, no, sir, just that I'm her friend. Oh. Toby? <clears throat> sure. Herman, I'm concerned about Renee. She has this fantasy about wanting to be a professional dancer. She's holding down a job here. What's wrong with her wanting to dance in her spare time? Pursuing a dance career will get her nowhere. Besides, she's barely holding down this job. In one week, she's been late repeatedly. I keep getting complaints from her supervisor. Well, if you have a problem with her, why don't you talk to her? Oh, I can't relate to her. And believe me, I've tried. I even sat down and tried watching television with her. We watched some program called Yo! MTV Raps. <laughs> ah, ah, so you, you were hoping I could talk to her? Well, yes, I'd appreciate it. After all, you are her homie. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to Renee. Oh, thank you, Herman. <laughs> I'm going to the copy room. Don't follow me. <laughs> this is Mother Goose. Goldilocks is entering your sector. Commence surveillance. Hetty's coming to the copy room. Keep an eye on her. Amateurs. <laughs>
And Jay, this will just take five minutes and we'll head out to the game. Take your time, man. Please, I don't know why Mr. Bracken singled out me to talk to his niece. Obviously, he sees you as a role model for her, and he should. Renee's a lot younger than us. We gotta show her what it means to be an adult. Oh, my God. Ow. Jay. Ow. Hey, Jay. Ow. Bye, Jay. Excuse me? Hey, Renee. Hey, Harry. How's it going, man? What you doing here? Oh, just can't get enough of dance. <laughs> no, actually, I went down to the mailroom, and they, they said you had cut out early. Again. So, how are things going with your new job? It's going great. Yeah? Yeah, well, that's not what I hear, actually. Apparently, there have been a few complaints. What does it matter? When I become a famous dancer, who cares how well I deliver the stupid mail? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But, Renee, you know... Renee, you know... Renee, could you just for uh, a second... Um, let me tell you something. <clears throat> when I was in high school, I, w I was a pretty good sprinter. Then I got to college, and I thought if I went out for the track team, I, I could do really well. Is there a point to this? I'm starting to stiffen up. Yeah, the point is, I didn't go out for track, because I knew that I would never be a professional runner. I needed to focus my attention on something with a future. You know, and so do you. You know how hard it is to make a living as a dancer? It's not going to be hard for me, because I'm good at dancing. Well, yeah, Renee, but... Is it really so important that we talk her out of this? We have to. We promised Mr. Bracken we would. Mm, maybe you're right. She'll find out soon enough that this dance thing is a dream. You know, I have a dream. Oh? What would that be? Well, right now, I'm dreaming that I'm the soap in their shower. Mr. Bracken, she is good. Well, Herman, as you know, my daughter Susan was good. But she had an injury and had nothing to fall back on. Yeah, but Mr. Bracken, if you could have seen the look on Renee's face, it was so clear that dancing makes her happy. Herman, I am responsible for Renee while she is in New York, and I will not have her wasting her life away trying to be happy. <laughs> Sir, what's wrong with trying to be happy? Well, if everyone did what made them happy, the whole world would be checking facts. Well, obviously he doesn't understand what it's like to have a dream well, Frankly, neither do I What do you mean? You're the one who brought up our dream to go out for college track You bought that prattle? That was not prattle You were pointing out a time in our life when we gave up on a dream And we've always regretted it I'll always wonder how good we might have been Yeah I wonder what held us back <laughs> Did you hear something? <laughs> Mr. Bracken, haven't you ever had a dream? Yes, of course, when I was younger. Well, what was it? Well, like most young people, I wanted to try my hand at showbiz, but... Uh, really? Really? Doing what? Uh, it's not important. Fine. Was it musical theater? I really don't want to talk okay. about it. That's right. That's right. Now, the point is... It was is, the circus, wasn't it? The point <laughs> is, Herman, I don't want Renee to make the same mistake. She has to start planning for the future. Now, I appreciate you trying to help, but this is between Renee and me. All right, all right. Just because you failed as a mime. I was not a mime. <laughs> so, buddy, what time do you want to leave tonight? Louise, I have to tell you something. I don't need you to be my buddy because I've hired Rudy. <laughs> I met him at the gym. You mean you're paying him to be your bodyguard? Not exactly. I just have to work out in front of him on the Stairmaster. <laughs> well, maybe all three of us could be buddies. Listen, Louise, I just don't want you to be my buddy. Oh, no. It's summer camp all over again. Herm, guess what? You know that girl I was talking to at the dance studio? Yeah. Turns out she's one of the fly girls. 
somehow, all of a sudden, a fly girl starts talking to you? Well, somehow, she got the idea that I was a big agent and uh, could possibly help her cross over in a film. Oh, Jay. That's kind of a low thing to do. Babe, I'm an agent. <laughs> Only for a couple of days, though. Fly girls are just here in town auditioning future fly girls. Really? Yeah, you should come to the audition. It's today at noon. Watch them dance. Hey, everybody, look alive. I got mail here. Renee, sweetheart. Jay Nichols, love your dancing. Give me a call. We'll do the lunch thing. Hey, Renee. Herman, the more I think about it, the more angry I get that you came to lecture me. I'm not talking to you. Well, can I just say that I thought you were fantastic? You blew me away. Okay, I'm talking to you again. <laughs> we should tell Renee about the Fly Girl audition. Excuse me, may I remind you of this? This is between me and Renee, and I want you to stay out of it. And may I remind you of this? Yes, fine, fine, fine. Exactly what does this prove? Nothing, just art for art's sake. <laughs> hey, Renee, you know the Fly Girls are having auditions today? Yeah, I know, I killed to get into that. Well, Jay just met one of them. I think we may be able to get you an audition. You're kidding! Oh, yeah. thank Kermit! You all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Will you be my buddy? Sure, girlfriend. Now, hold on, let's start with Buddy and go from there. <laughs> Hey, Jay, thanks again for getting Renee this audition, but are you sure we're allowed to be here? Yeah, no problem. Don't forget, I have a very uh, special relationship with one of the Fly Girls. Hi, Jay. Hey. Did you set up any auditions with those film directors you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still waiting to hear from Hitchcock. <laughs> Hasn't gotten back to me yet. Isn't he dead? He is in this business if he doesn't start returning my phone calls. <laughs> Seriously, though, you take care of the dancing, I'll take care of Tinseltown, okay? <laughs> Be like a proud stage mother. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I don't even know why we're here. We're specifically going against what Mr. Bracken wants. We are supposed to be keeping Renee on the straight and narrow. Uh, speaking of straight and narrow, if we're gonna keep watching these fly girls. We better stand behind something. <laughs> You look terrific. Okay, you guys, listen up. You all did great. We'll let you know in a couple of days, and thank you for coming, okay? Well, Herm, this is really exciting. Thanks for getting me this audition. Of course, if my uncle finds out, he'll kill me. Well, don't worry. If he gives you any grief, I'll just say... Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Your supervisor's looking for you. I suggest, young lady, you get back to the office while you still have a job. Well, maybe I don't need that job. Maybe I'm going to be a fly girl. Damn it, Renee, you are not being realistic. Mr. Bracken, don't blame Renee. I encouraged her to go to this audition. You realize if these actions continue, I'll have to send you home to your mother. Maybe you can fire me, but you cannot send me home to my mother. Herman, I was talking to my niece. I'm very disappointed. I've never been this betrayed before in my life. She's young. It's her dream. That time I was talking to you, Herman. Come on, Renee. Okay, wait a minute, can we talk about this? Herman, I've always thought of you as a friend. A son, almost. But no more. From now on, you are nothing more than an employee, and I am nothing more than your boss. <laughs> oh, Earl, there's nothing I enjoy more in the morning than witty banter from an employee slash friend. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Bracken. Uh, Oh, no, he doesn't like us anymore. <laughs> oh, stop your belly aching. It's only you tired us. This man is our mentor. He trusted us and we let him down. At least let's go in there and tell him we were wrong. We were not wrong. We were helping Renee follow her dream. Exactly. And we must all follow our dreams wherever they go. And if you'll excuse me, ergo mine. <laughs> At least let me buy you lunch. I mean, you saved my life. Well, you'd have done the same for me. I wouldn't go that far. You know, actually, 
Actually, I'm not even that committed to buying you lunch. <laughs> what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Are you kidding? I was leaving work with Rudy, my bodyguard, when all of a sudden this guy sneaks up behind me and demands I hand over my purse. So what'd Rudy do? He screamed at the top of his lungs, ran down the street crying and calling out for someone named Jeremy. <laughs> Well, what'd you do? Well, I didn't have time to do anything. Louise suddenly appears out of the shadows and clobbers the guy. She mashed his face with a trash can lid over and over. <laughs> it took three con ed workers just to pry her off. I decided it's time to take back the night. <laughs> Louise, will you be my buddy? I'm afraid I can't, Hetty. I'm New York's buddy now. <laughs> Ah, Hetty, Louise, so nice to see you. Will you check these articles, please? But only when you get the time. I need this by noon. Why is he giving you the cold shoulder? Oh, he's decided he wants nothing more to do with me, all because I told Renee about some dance audition. But you know what? He is way off base if he thinks he can force Renee to change. People don't change that easily. Morning. Hi, Renee. How's it going? Fine, thank you. Renee, you all right? I'm fine. Renee? Oh, God, don't tell me. You didn't get the job with the Fly Girls. Well, I haven't heard yet, but let's face it, it's a real long shot. What? Herman, did you know there are 33,414 dancers out of work, and those who find work are seldom employed past the age of 26.4? All right, let me guess. You've been talking to your uncle. Well, he really laid it on the line last night. If I continue to dance, I'll lose my job and he'll cut off my room and board. Well, so you'll get another job. Look, you can't give up your dream. Herman, I don't think I can make it on my own. Renee, remember what happened to me. Okay, I didn't go out for the track team, and now I'll always wonder how well I might have done if I hadn't given up. I mean, for all I know, I could have been the next Carl Lewis. <laughs> Herman, there are so many reasons why you could have not been the next Carl Lewis. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's your color, your build, and then there's the issue of foot speed. Well, I may not be the quickest guy and out I on the track. I hate to think of what you look like in running shorts. Okay. Hey, look, the point is, you have to go for your dream. As long as my uncle is against us, I don't have a choice. We have to run after her. I think that's a bad idea. Running in the halls is against the rules. Oh, oh, will you two let it go? We have caused enough damage. We have not caused the damage Bracken has. He's robbed her of her will to dream. Well, what do you expect? He never had a dream. <laughs> Mr. Bracken, I need to take a few hours off. You have personal problems? Take care of them on your own time. I'm sorry. This is something I have to do. Herman. I better go watch his back. This city's a dangerous place. Louise! <laughs> He's on his own. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. Well, I'm not listening. Fine, fine. You don't want to listen to me? Maybe you'll listen to him. Where did you get that? Mrs. Bracken found it. Oh, my. It's been 30 years. I thought I'd lost him. Kind of like being reunited with an old friend, huh? You know, there was a time that I wanted to be the world's greatest ventriloquist. It was going to be Jacko and Bracko all the way. <laughs> oh, those were great times. Traveling all around, going from town to town, club to club, hoping against hope that one of them would let us on the stage. What went wrong? One of them let us on stage. <laughs> Uh, that was the beginning of the end. The act bombed. He blamed me, I blamed him. It got real ugly. Do you remember any of the old act? No, it's, uh, it's... Oh, uh, come on, come on. Bracco? <laughs> well, let's see. Um, hello, Jacko! Hello, Bracco! <laughs> Tell me, Jacko, who led the German expedition of 1901-03? Well, let's see. That would be Professor Eric von Dreykowski, of course. <laughs> Remember when Paul Carlin's dad fell in the thrashing machine? It was the most gruesome thing we'd ever witnessed? Until, Until now. <laughs> Your act was asking a dummy facts? Yeah, I don't know why it never caught on. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll never know, sir. <laughs> well, but the point is, for a while, you followed your dream. Oh, yes, but it wasn't right for me. 
No, I belong in research. Well, maybe dancing is what's right for Renee. Maybe that's where she belongs. You really think I should give her the chance? Uncle Paul, I gotta talk to you. I am going to be a dancer. You got the job with the Fly Girls? No, I didn't, but that doesn't matter. Say what you want to say, do what you want to do, but I'm gonna pursue my dream. Of course you are. I don't... What? Renee, I realize that the only one who can tell what's right for you is you. Now, dancing may be good for you, it may not, but you'll never know unless you try. You mean it? Of course I do. Oh, thank you, Uncle Paul. <laughs> oh, don't mention it. Tell you what, why don't we go to dinner? I've got reservations at Marino's. Marino's? Isn't that in kind of a tough neighborhood? Not a problem. Got it covered. Okay, let's move. I'm on a tight schedule. Avoid eye contact. Watch single file. Good job. Ten four. <laughs> Jay, I feel really awkward. We don't belong at the rehearsal. You haven't been pretending to be an agent again, have you? No, 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 that's over. Well, good. But if anybody calls you Mr. Spielberg, just play along. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Allen. Coming up next on Newswatch, we'll have the latest on problems with the Cambria 911 system and possible solutions for the county. And I'm Donya Archer. Today's rain means water everywhere, but not a drop to drink in northern Cambria County. We'll look at why. More Blair County teens are arrested for carrying weapons. Also ahead, the state attorney general's office comes to the aid of senior citizens. We'll have all that and more coming up next on Newswatch.